Hello everyone, I'm finally starting to break down the commander role into an advanced tutorial. I have taken extensive notes with tips to share, and I will now start to put them into videos. This has been a huge undertaking, so if you appreciate this at all, please give this video a like. I recommend watching my basic tutorial first, since I will assume you know everything in that video during this video. So we are going to talk about manpower. Manpower is the most valuable resource in Hell Let Loose. This resource doubles production of all nodes, which gives you everything that you need. This resource is always draining whenever someone on your team dies, so you don't want to waste it. I decided to start with manpower first because it is the most frequently mismanaged resource as I will explain later in the video. First, I will discuss Encourage and Airheads. Both of these cost 400 manpower. If you have all of your nodes up, you should almost always use Encourage unless the game is about to end. Encourage is a very important ability that many people forget about, and you want to be sure that you use it as soon as you can every time that it is available. You will quickly regain the 400 manpower when you use this ability so that you can use an airhead if you need to. So for airheads, you do not want to use these as soon as they are available. You do not use these just because someone demands you to use one. You use the airhead when you think it is a good idea, and that the airhead will survive. There is nothing worse than dropping an airhead when you only have 400 manpower and the airhead immediately gets destroyed. So you lost your ability to use a reinforce, you lost your ability to use encourage if it becomes available, and it's going to be a slow climb before you get 400 manpower again. So you need to be very sure that you drop it when you think it is a good idea. Whenever you want to use an airhead, make sure you couple it with a bombing run. Now, whenever you use it with a bombing run i'm not saying like you put the bombing run over the airhead um, i'm saying that you use a bombing run somewhere and you put the airhead somewhere as well because the bombing run will make it less likely that someone's going to hear the airhead and maybe your bombing run kills the people that would have heard the airhead but they're in the spawn screen so the more enemy dead when the airhead goes over the more likely it's going to land on the ground so i always drop an airhead so that when the bombs start to fall on the ground, the airhead is dropping, like the noise of the airhead is dropping. And if you can time that just right, then you can have a higher chance of the airhead landing successfully. When you are using the bombing run, you should always drop it where you think the enemy garrison is, not where you think most of the enemies are. In fact, you only use a bombing run for kills on defense in rare situations. Now, usually, wherever you drop the bombing run and get the garrison on enemy point, that's where most of the enemy is, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they all run off the point, and you don't need to put a bombing run on them. You need to put a bombing run where you think they spawned and came from. And you can kind of look at the map and see a trail of people to get a general idea of where the garrison might be and using your map knowledge of knowing where people you generally put garrisons and they pretty much put them in the same few spots and so if you play enough games you'll kind of get a feel for that so now i'm just going to explain the different types of airheads first we have the sneaky airhead sneaky airheads drop super close to the enemy strong point or inside the enemy strong point and they are not noticed by the enemy this is the hardest airhead to pull off is obviously the most effective. You can use these anytime you believe there are no enemies defending at all, especially if you think they have no garrison on defense. New commanders should avoid trying to use this because it's most likely that the airhead will not be successful. You need good map knowledge to really pull this off. However, if the game is minutes away from ending and you are losing, you might as well try this, but it would usually not work. So now I'm going to talk about what is probably my most favorite airhead, and it's the what you gonna do about it airhead. When your team is very close to the enemy strong point and just needs a little bit more help, you can drop this airhead right on your friendlies close to the enemy strong point. This is like a sneaky airhead, but with a ton of support. The enemy can clear his day seeing it landing right in front of their eyes, but they can't do anything about it. You should try your best to drop these out of tank line of fire and enemy grenade range, as those are what usually takes these types of airheads out. If your commander ever does this, it is important to defend the airhead because in 30 seconds, there is likely going to be a huge spawn wave of support to help you overwhelm the enemy. It's important to note that you really only want to do this if you believe your force is strong enough to defend the airhead. If you drop this airhead and you only got a couple of guys there and the enemy, the entire enemy team is on the point, they're going to quickly and easily overwhelm you guys 
and destroy the airhead because the entire enemy team will be focused on that airhead. So you really only want to use this if you have a lot of support for it. So usually instead of doing that, you'll just do what most people tend to do, and it is the flank airhead. The flank airhead drops opposite of wherever your force is attacking. Usually that means um, it drops in the red zone because your force is attacking from the blue zone. However, I've seen games where the main force is attacking from the red zone and you have no garrisons on the front line. So maybe you could consider dropping the airhead in the blue zone for a flank garrison over there. However, it would be better in that situation to just make a garrison. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to do that for some reason. So like I've mentioned before, it's important to couple this up a bombing run. It makes it less likely that the enemy is going to notice it. And you can consider using a strafe run over this in case one or two people happen to notice it and they're uh, about to destroy it. To time the strafing run correctly, you need to put the strafe run over the airhead when the airhead is three-fourths of the way down. Uh, next, we have an airhead that um, I've only ever seen myself use, and I call it uh, a Sally Forth airhead. This is an airhead that lands next to the enemy sector, that lands to the next enemy sector, so... Uh, Whenever you're attacking an enemy point and you think you're going to take it, you drop an airhead to the next sector so that after you capture the sector you're attacking, you will then have an airhead ready to go so you can leap on to the next sector. Now, ideally, you would have a garrison already ready to go to do that, but sometimes it's not possible or you're just moving too fast for that. And so that's when you would use this type of airhead. And you really only use this when the enemy sector is very far away, like it's like all the way up north or all the way down south or even just one sector up or down. Um, you definitely don't want to use this if the next sector is in the same line as, uh, as the current sector. So don't do that. It will almost always get destroyed, but this one, it may not even get noticed because the enemy is so focused on defending their point that they're not worried about an airhead landing super far away. And they may not even hear it or notice it because it's landing super far away. And so it'll be ready to go after you take that sector. Now you got you really have to have a feel for uh, how, how the game works in terms of knowing if you're going to take the sector or not. Uh, you definitely don't want to do this if you think there's any chance that you're not going to take the sector. Okay, uh, next is a uh, probably a more uh, obvious one, but it's a defense airhead. So this is uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You drop a airhead on defense. Now I'm mentioning this one because I see this used incorrectly all the time. Um, if you are losing a sector and you don't have anyone defending and you don't have any garrisons or any spawn points on it, do not drop an airhead directly in the strong point. There's almost certainly enemies in there, and they're going to destroy the airhead as soon as it lands. So instead of doing that, you want to drop an airhead in the next sector, like the, the sector on your next point, because you need to be ready to leap in and take the enemy sector after they take your point, because they're going to take it. You don't have any spawn points there. You don't have anyone there. So it's gone. It's already lost. Uh, you just have to be prepared for a counteroffensive. And if you get an airhead set up ready to go as soon as they uh, cap, that sector, then you can retake the sector pretty quickly. That's assuming that there's no enemies there, but they're usually all the enemies like to pile in on the strong point and they don't fan out. So this usually works. Um, ideally, you would have a, a garrison in, the, in this location and not have to use this airhead at all. But if you don't have the garrison or you for some reason think that this garrison that you have up isn't good enough or is about to be destroyed, you can drop this uh, airhead. Some of you may be thinking, well, why not just drop it like far up north or south of the point, um, and then when it lands, then I can jump on the airhead and then go attack from the enemy sector. Well, the problem is if there's an airhead in the air and then the, the point is capped, the airhead is destroyed in the sky like a garrison. Um, as soon as you press the airhead deploy button from the commander screen, it is essentially a garrison on the map and until it is destroyed by the enemy or until it times out. Uh, when you lose a sector, it gets destroyed. Um, it, the icon will still appear on the map, but the airhead will no longer be there, and most people find this out the hard way. Be very mindful of that and only drop airheads in sectors that are not being currently captured. Do not drop an airhead in the enemy sector if you believe you are about to lose your defense point. Okay, now I'm going to mention the bombing run airhead. Many of you have probably seen this before. It's when uh, the commander drops an airhead and the bombs go over the airhead as soon as it lands. So if it's timed just right and uh, the bombs land on the airhead correctly, it could 
definitely work um, unless there's enemies in structures nearby or enemies that spawn on OPs after the bombs. A lot of things can go wrong with it, so I personally never really use it. I think bombing runs can be used more uh, effectively in different ways. So, um, But this is a good last resort option to pit pull off. Like if you've tried everything else, nothing else is working. The enemy has like lots of fortifications and a garrison and just a ton of guys on the point and you just can't seem to get past a barbed wire because your team isn't using satchels, um, then you can try this method and it, it's probably not going to work, but it might. And if it does work, it's a, it's a really big, big deal. So some of you may be thinking like, oh, if I put bombs over the airhead, want to destroy the airhead. And now the bomb run cannot destroy the airhead. It's immune just like your own garrisons. Okay, so next up is the establish airhead. This is the kind of airhead you use when you're just trying to establish a position to attack the enemy point. Um, I don't really ever use these, but this is the closest I had to um, using one. Um, so this is like a kind of situation where you don't really necessarily want to risk dropping it deep behind enemy lines because it's more uh, more of a higher chance that it'll get intercepted. So instead, you just drop it somewhere close to the enemy point that you think there are n no enemies. People generally drop these kind of in the blue sector, or close to the enemy point, because they don't have any garrisons nearby. So in offensive mode like this, you kind of just want to set up the garrisons in every pot potential location that the enemy point can be, but if you don't, then you can use an airhead like this. Last, I'm just going to mention airheads that you should never use, and I'm going to call these useless airheads. These are airheads that are dropping so far away from the action, from the point, that there's no reason to spawn on them. In general, you want your airheads to be more useful than your current garrisons that you have down. So whether that is establishing a new flank or doing any of the things I've mentioned, um, there's really no reason to just drop an airhead. And if you're doing that for recon or something, then that's a terrible idea. You should give them a jeep or a truck or something like that and let them travel with that and don't use an airhead for recon. Okay, next I'm going to briefly mention Reinforce. I already mentioned it in the basic tutorial, but I'll restate it here. There are only a few situations where you should use Reinforce. I see people using Reinforce way more often than they should, and you may think, well, why does it matter? Well, because it costs 200 manpower, and it has a five-minute cooldown. So if you end up needing it within the next five minutes, uh, you won't have it. And if you run out of manpower because you used it, then you won't have the manpower to use it. Also, it's a waste of manpower that you could use for an airhead or encourage later on. So if you're just hitting reinforce every time you're getting a little bit capped, uh, then you're not going to have the manpower to use encourage, which may drain your munitions, may drain your fuel. And over time, you're just not going to have a lot of resources if you're using all of your abilities like you should be. You should only use a reinforce when you have friendlies in the strong point. You have a garrison at or near the strong point, and you believe the enemy is capping the sector by just a small amount of people. And if the cap is at or near 50%. I add that last part because a lot of people will reinforce at like 10% when all you really needed was someone to spawn at the garrison. You didn't need a reinforce. A reinforce is like a last resort option. You got your whole team there. They're fighting over it. They're into strong point, and you're doing everything you can but you're still losing the sector even though you got like a ton of people there. That's when you use a reinforce. Otherwise, you most of the time you just kind of let it go because uh, you don't have any defenders there and a reinforce isn't going to do much. So it's important to know when to let it go. If you have no defenders and no garrison and the point is being taken, just let it go and prepare to retake by possibly using a defensive airhead. Okay, so just for completeness, I'm going to discuss Dismantle Garrison. So um, this ability removes a garrison by using the map. If you can physically go take down the garrison by holding down F when you walk up to the garrison, do that instead. Or there are certain situations where this is actually preferable to uh, do instead of taking it down by yourself. So let's say you are defending a point and there is a garrison 150 meters away and your entire team is having to run across an open field to get to the defense point and 80% of them are dying in the process. Since you managed to make it to the defense point, you can remove that garrison and immediately place a new garrison if you think you can keep that garrison defended until a wave spawns. So you really only need to rarely use this during a pinch, but um, it's helpful. You can also just use it if you have a ton of manpower and you need uh, help uh, taking down garrisons because it could take a long time to drive or run to each individual garrison. Do not destroy a garrison on defense if it's not in the best location unless you are ready to replace it immediately. It's actually better to have a 
garrison that's not ideal than to have no garrison at all. So uh, just keep that in mind too whenever you're trying to decide uh, where to put garrisons. Um, only use that dismantle garrison ability if you're really sure that you can get one down as soon as you use the ability. You can coordinate with uh, other squad leaders that listen to do that. Okay, so to wrap up, I'm just going to give some information that is important for when you're playing commander and whenever you're using airheads. So, like, let's say you are wanting to drop uh, supplies with your airhead so that you can get a Gary up. Now, you don't really want to do that most of the time because... So let's say you drop an airhead and it's landing in, in the enemy sector in the red zone. And then you're dropping a supply drop. The supply drop will always drop fairly later than the uh, airhead. And so whenever it drops later, it will give the enemy time to find your airhead. So if they didn't see where the airhead landed the first time, the supply drop essentially gives them a second chance. There's been a number of airheads I've found just because the supply drop led, led me straight to it when I wasn't entirely sure where the airhead landed. So in general, I don't, land, I don't drop airheads and supplies in the same location as, uh, as you're seeing here. The next tip I have is whenever you're playing on a night map, you want to drop the airhead in the enemy sector as soon as possible, assuming you're not currently losing your defense point. Um, that's because on night maps, it's pretty OP because they cannot see your airhead. They don't know where it is. It's very hard to find. And so you just kind of drop it pretty much anywhere and it they will not see it. And so if you're doing that, you can pretty much win every single game you are playing as commander at night, assuming that you're not losing your sector when airheads become available in 10 minutes so um another tip is that like all warfare is based on deception so if you're dropping an airhead it might be a good idea to drop supplies opposite to the airhead uh to the enemy point that's if you think that there's a pretty good chance that the airhead's gonna get uh spotted and overwhelmed so you instead just say hey you got two drops which one are you gonna go to and they may not find one of them so you can do that in, as well whenever you're uh, thinking that they're probably going to destroy one of them. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have an airhead down on the ground in the enemy sector, but you're actively losing your point, then you uh, need to tell everyone to ignore the airhead and spawn on defense. A lot of times people will just hop on the airhead and like forget about defense, and well, then you lose your sector, and then you have a useless airhead. So it's very important to keep that in mind. People aren't going to always notice it so it's very important for you as the commander to let people know what's happening in the game if you um even if you have to say it in the chat because sometimes the squad leaders don't re relay the information to the rest of the team so if you say it in the chat then everybody has a chance to uh, see what's going on now this one should seem pretty obvious but do not drop airheads in open terrain uh, sometimes the map will not appear like it's open terrain so if you're not sure um always drop it behind or near structures because those are always pretty much accurate on every map except currently omaha beach because they just never updated it um so most of the map is accurate but uh, the place around artillery battery isn't accurate if you drop an airhead in a, an open terrain like on el alamein and you just drop it somewhere and it's an open field it's going to be useless as everybody that spawns on it's going to get killed and a tank will be easily able to shoot it. Now, the, my last tip is actually something that's actually pretty helpful um, because a lot of people don't really understand this. And uh, in fact, you'll kind of get belittled as commander if you do this sometimes because the person probably doesn't really understand how things work in certain situations. But let's say you're on FOI and you're attacking, um, you know, a point that has essentially open terrain in all directions. So like my last tip, I said never drop an airhead in open terrain. So what do you do when the enemy point is surrounded by open terrain? Well, in that situation, you're pretty much forced to drop the airhead directly on the point itself or in a direction that just so happens to not have open terrain. So like there's some points in Foy where there's some trees off to the edge of the map and you can drop the airhead over there and that's the best chance you have in terms of the airhead being successful versus a good team that really knows what they're doing. These airheads will pretty much never work unless those people are dead because you used a bombing run over them and killed most of them. That's just something else to keep in mind whenever you're 
trying to attack a position on open terrain. Don't drop an airhead out in the open on doing a flank airhead. You need to drop the airhead close to the enemy point. It has to be a what you gonna do about it airhead or a bombing run airhead or a sneaky airhead. So honestly, I could say a lot more, but uh, I feel like this video has gone on long enough and so I'll just wrap things up there. If you have any more questions, just let me know and I'll try to answer them if uh, I feel like uh, they haven't been answered yet. And uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoy this, please leave a like. I essentially spent an entire day working on this video, which, uh, you know, just imagine if you had a day off and you just spent the whole day working on something. I'll be working on the next part of this tutorial pretty soon, so uh, make sure you subscribe to see that if you're interested in learning how to essentially master commanding in Hell at Loose. And one last thing before we wrap up, um, everything I've said is essentially my opinion and there's not one way to command. You can do different things and have your own tactics, but this is just what I do. Okay, so um, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.